us, it's about popularity. If people like you, they vote for you. People like what you say, what you project. The Chinese mayor is literally working 16 hours a day. In China, mayors can be coming from any place. Their ability to rise is based on their ability to perform in the U.S. You count to a majority, you're done. They're the minority, it doesn't matter what happens to them. But in China, that is not the way it's done. You have to reach this consensus. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. And I will probably start from Charles. You have lived in the U.S. for 30 years previously, right? How many mayors have you met? Who are they? And how did you like them? Um, I spent most of my years in the U.S. in New York and New Jersey. Meeting them is handshaking at public events, so you don't really get to know them very much. When he says shake hands, that means you're shaking hands and giving money. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely. They're all over the place doing fundraising events, trying to run for the next round. It's about getting your message out. What you do is you, you look at the pool of voters and you decide what the main issues are. You do focus campaigns. This is just like advertising. You go in, you decide what are the big three issues that they have. Then you craft answers to those issues which will appeal to the majority of people. So these are carefully crafted in a PR campaign, public relations. And then you give the answer to the candidates and you tell them, don't go off script. It's really a play on psychology because if you think about it, crafting of the message or putting together a plan, a program, a script, what do these things mean? Do they address the problems of the society? No, it doesn't. Whatever they say, it is just to get elected and it's not generally coming from them. It's coming from professional script writers who put this message out in an effort to sell your product. It's not only that now, it's getting even more sophisticated with algorithms. It's basically effective brainwashing. You're mirroring back exactly people's desires. That's right. In Michigan, they had a kid just out of high school who became mayor. What qualifications does he have? Is he a bright, nice kid? Sure. But how can he run a city? Right? So no qualifications are necessary. So what are the entry criteria for someone who wants to be a mayor in the U.S.? Ambition. Ambition. All right. Is that uh, enough? Uh, well, you yes. have to be very good at being molded. If I'm ambitious enough to do whatever is necessary to get myself elected, that's a start. When you have millions of people living together, you have to have all of these systems in place. But the qualifications to run those systems are not required. If a candidate says, look, I'm going to be honest with you. There's nothing I can do unless we rebuild the sewer system. That will require that we issue municipal bonds. That means that your taxes are going to go up. The other guy will say, ah, oh, I can fix it. Don't worry about it. I know a way. There's plenty of fat in the government. If somebody says, I want to raise your taxes, do you think that anyone wants to vote for them? The moment that you only vote for your own interests, that democracy is effectively dead. I also wonder what is the standard electoral process? First off, there's no uniformity. There's no national law. Electoral uh, issues are under the state. And within that state, you have uh, villages, cities, which have some requirements. Who gets to be nominated? It depends on what level you start off. I was on the board of, uh, of zoning uh, for a small village outside of Milwaukee. People consider the character of the people. They know the wife. They go to church with them, all of these things. When you start going bigger, there is no personal knowledge. Then it's about crafting the message. So the higher you go, the more it's about message. So when I would package a candidate, I would create a myth about the candidate. I would bring out what I thought was positive and what would appeal to the voters. An idealized image. An idealized image. I wouldn't talk about their failures, for example. That sounds like a business, but that type of business in China does not exist at all. No, it just doesn't seem to make sense that your leaders are being picked by professional organizations who can package them like a product. Now, that's a generalization. 
there are always individuals who have, you know, a tremendous charisma, uh, or they have ideas and ideals that they want to push. But the difficulty is if you're untrained. I've been there when, you know, different groups, and they all show up, and you literally say, what do you want? He says, well, you know, this is the way we feel, and, you know, we, we, if, you're, if we're going to back your candidate, we need to know that you're in favor of, you know, some legislation that we have. You know, we have a... Uh, issue where we want more pay from the city or more benefits, uh, if it's a union. Uh, community issues can go to things like having interpreters on the police force and things like that. It's not all bad, all right? But when a candidate arrives in office and basically isn't making any decisions, he's simply keeping the promises that he made in order to get elected. So when electing their mayors, what do the American citizens care the most? Everyone is out for themselves. Even if it's for the good of their community, it's still out for themselves. It's not for country as a whole or society as a whole. It elects popular leaders, popular in the sense of saying the things that the voting public would like to hear. In terms of how officials are selected and elected, how is it different from the Chinese system based on your observations? In China, mayors can be coming from any place. You could be in Qingdao, and the next day you, you're in another province, totally different. But you will not find many mayors who have not gone through the village level, the county level, series of experiences of managing the well-being of collective societies before they're promoted to the level of a big city mayor. And, and, and that's a big difference. In addition, they may have done a stint within a corporation, uh, one of the state-owned enterprises or one of the uh, enterprises owned by the province or the actual town or city or village right. itself. So there's this requirement that you're able to do it, and it's very much meritocracy. It is this steady progression up. And what's interesting about it, they examine you you have a quiet period. They talk to all of your colleagues. Do you need the respect of your coworkers? In the U.S., it's about popularity. If people like you, they vote for you. People like what you say, what you project, that you get elected. In the U.S., you have to assemble enough uh, special interests where you have both the money and votes in order to get elected. It's not what you've done, it's what you can convince people, how you can psychologically mold them and, and attract them to you. A Chinese mayor is literally working 16 hours a day. For Chinese officials, their ability to rise is based on their ability to perform. Do you think China's democracy or the whole process, people's democracy, will become a new model of democracy that can be globally accepted? I think it is already being accepted by a lot more people outside China. But that comes, of course, parallel to the decline of the prestige of U.S.-branded democracy. I think people should understand there is no monolithic voice in China except when a decision is made. Then you support it. But prior to that, I've been at meetings where the discussion has been extremely open where you had people furiously debating each other. What was interesting to me is rather than take a vote and say whoever has 51%, mm -hmm. that's the view we're going to take, they kept talking for hours until they got to a point where there was a consensus agreement where everyone said, okay, I can live with that in the U.S. As I said, oh. you count to majority, you're done. They're the minority, it doesn't matter what happens to them. But in China, that is not the way it's done. You and have the to other reach part, this consensus. The other, there are different levels, too. A lot of things from lower levels actually filter up through various channels and networks. It has to go all the way down to the bottom. And then also, then the also filters back up. And this is really, to me, what whole process democracy is. What would you say the biggest difference between the Chinese system and American system? What China's democratic system tries to do is make sure that you have competent people who are delivering what is necessary. In addition to have that competency, you have to know what the people think. In the United States and many other places, 
the nations are represented by an elite, the top 0.01% wealthy people who are not connected to ordinary people. But in China, you look at the NPC, you have people who are street cleaners, taxi drivers, people who work in agriculture, farming. They represent the voices of their people. And the people say, it's just, you know, they're rubber stamped, they go, no. If you ever met these people, they're very proud to be representing. And they go around and they talk to people in their constituent group. What do we need? What does the government need to do for us? Not just us as, you know, uh, one group. Yes, there's that part, but how does this fit into the whole part? If you go through the suggestions that are brought at the NPC each year, you can get a very good understanding of what people's concerns are. The proposals and, are very diverse. Yes. Just the simple fact that you have a gathering of that type of people is very significant. In the West, you don't find you know, street cleaners and taxi drivers in Congress talking about legislature. But there's an, another very important part to this differentiation. Mayors in China, or governors, or even county leaders, have to take their overall plan for their municipality and so on in the context of the national strategy. In the US, you find it's the opposite. How do I squeeze the governor? How do I squeeze the federal government? It's everybody for themselves at all times. That's very, very important facet. How did China achieve what it achieved? It's a national effort, central government, provincial, and local, where it's coordinated and the synergies are created therefrom. And one plus one equals three instead of one, one plus one equals one and a half. And then the other part is American democracy has been made out to be something that's from a dream world. It's being preached for the rest of the world to follow. So American voters have this in the back of their heads. They're on top of the hill. Actually, the system it doesn't work well. In the US, there's this constant criticism of China as a place where people cannot be free or happy, all right? And the US is presented as the land of the choice and freedom. But what are the realities? Which one is producing? 40 years of upward economic uh, activity, which has raised the entire population, right? Versus a system that has basically gone down in terms of actual numbers and gone sideways in terms of actual wages. While America was growing at leaps and bounds, because we, we have natural resources, we were able to attract incredibly intelligent people uh, to be innovative. While that was happening, a lot of the problems presented by democracy could be glossed over. But now the U.S. is in a situation where its growth has slowed considerably. Mm -hmm. And now it's about getting my piece of the pie. So people's attitudes turn from being hopeful, the American dream, my children will have a better life than I have, to now feeling that my children won't have. So that loss of hope, this feeling that the pie is, is shrinking and I need to get my peace, the selfishness, this is what's really undermining the U.S.